The sound consists of a bunch of tracks that didn't make it to official releases. It's still dope enough to want to put it on repeat quick, so keep this. Throw us in your CD player. Oh, I forgot they're non existent, dog. Shit has changed major. So scratch that. Throw it in your iPod player. Like, my God. Right What's going on, folks? Happy, happy Wednesday. And welcome uh, to another Wartime Optimism. <clears throat> Today, we're going to look at more Gaia, because uh, that's what I did last night. And so we're going to play around some more, and uh, I'm thinking that we're going to go through some of the things that I've found helpful. Helpful, I'm obviously still very much just learning it, uh, but there are like a couple little things that I think I would have found uh, useful when I got started uh, at the very beginning. And uh, if you're thinking about trying it out, maybe that'll help you as well. Um, Milan, what's going on, my man? Welcome, and thank you for being here. Um, okay. So, Nitten, what's going on, buddy? Good to have you. Uh, okay, so. Um, what should we, should we start just by how, I think we should start, um, Jay, what's going on? We haven't listened to you in a while, so we have you in the background today. Uh, I, you know, I've missed you on the stream. Not your presence, you've been in the chat a bunch, which I appreciate, uh, but I, we haven't been listening. And so now we are. Uh, Daniel, what's going on, my man? Thank you for coming. Um, okay, so, uh, well, let's take, the, the, before we hop in, um, no, let's hop in. I'm going to go over some of the very basic things that I found super helpful um, for me kind of understanding what I'm doing. And then we're going to look at that kind of hot springy image uh, that was the title for this uh, stream. And um, look at some uh, some strange issues that I ran into with that. Maybe you guys will have some answers for me, those of you that are uh, uh, Gaia pros. And uh, if not, it's things that I'm trying to figure out. I have figured out a couple of them. Uh, okay, let's get Gaia fired up here. Ba, ba, ba. And we gotta find... Oops, nope, not on that screen. Let's just go to a blank one. And... Do, do, do. And let's make sure you can see... Ooh, I'm gonna be covering some things here. Let's uh, let's maybe move me out of the way. We actually need the bottom right corner of this. Um, let's do a little bit of organization here. Let's move that down to the bottom, da, 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 like that, and then let's move uh, me away. Unlock that. Yeah, we actually need. I'll I'll try and stay out of the way as best as I can. Um, but uh, hopefully then we'll be able to see some of the stuff. Um, Miha, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, Nitten for monitors. Uh, I am a huge, huge fan of the Dell uh, Ultra Sharp series. Anything that has their premier color, which until you get into like either 30 inches and above or 4K and above, aren't that expensive anymore. I've been using two of them for forever. I have the 30 inch U301 something or another, uh, and then a 24 inch that I have um, vertical over here. For color accuracy and price, I don't think you can beat them, and I've had no trouble with them. Um, and at least, I don't have my secondary monitor like truly calibrated. My main monitor, you can store uh, the calibration on the monitor itself, uh, so that as opposed to on Windows, which doesn't do color management well, and sometimes you look at a Windows Explorer and things look messed up, and then it looks right in Photoshop and wrong in this and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Windows really needs to, needs to get it together when it comes to color management. Uh, but you can load the profile onto the monitor itself uh, and just bypass all of that. So, uh, Dell, anything that has premier color in the name is the way to go. And then I use a uh, X-Rite iDisplay Pro, I think is the name of it. X-Rite iDisplay Pro um, for calibrating uh, both the Wacom, the Cintiq, and um, the Dell itself. Uh, so yeah, definitely uh, check it out. Ever since I switched to the 30 inch, I'm a huge, huge fan. Uh, Miha, I keep all of it uh, as far as gamut goes at sRGB. Most 99% of the time that uh, anything that I make is being looked at. 
uh, professionally or otherwise, it is on a um, uh, device of some sort, which means sRGB all the way. If you do stuff in like Adobe RGB um, or anything else, then you end up with uh, colors that look, might look great on your screen, but then, you know, you send it to someone that just was looking at them normally and it looks like crap because it clamped everything down or whatever else. And so I've found sRGB to be the most foolproof way of making sure that what I'm looking at is relatively close to what everyone else is going to see on whatever device they're looking at it. Uh, with the lone exception of there's been a couple of print projects where uh, we were doing a lot of calibration. Um, it's a long story that's not worth getting into, but we were going back and forth with like the most minute of color changes uh, that I've ever dealt with from a client. And it was specifically for print, it was only for print. And for that one, I did switch to Adobe RGB on the monitors, so that I was getting a wider gamut and I could see smaller changes. Um, but that was, a, that was a giant headache that I hope never to have to ever do again, to be 100% honest. So, um, yeah, a lot of people will disagree with me on that, but at the end of the day, I want it to look right on a phone or a tablet because that's where it's most likely going to be looked at. Um, the only Apple device I still own is my iPad. And for any project, um, when I'm sending out finals, I typically will open them up on my iPad to look at them very quickly just for a sanity check to make sure something crazy didn't happen. Apple products, uh, obviously there's more Android and Windows users overall than Apple. But across Windows and Android devices, the color standards are all over the place, right? Like this is a Google phone and its color looks very different from a Samsung phone, which looks very different from a Motorola phone, et cetera, et cetera. Apple devices, whether you're talking about phones, their monitors or their tablets or um, computers are very consistent in color. They tend to be a little bit um, less contrasty and a little bit warmer to my eyes. Um, and so as far as the largest percentage of people that are actually going to see one of your images, the chances are it's going to be on an Apple device, uh, more likely than any other guarantee that you can look at. So that's my sanity check. Take a look at everything on an iPad. Um, just to make sure. And if it looks good there, you're probably fine. Um, actually, the reason I bought that iPad initially was only for client reviews. So that when I'd be going to a meeting, more often than not, I'm their office. They're not at my home office. Uh, and having that with me, that means no matter what type of monitor or display situation or projector situation they have going on in their conference room, uh, I have something that if we look at it and it's completely blown out or too red or too green or, or whatever, I've seen it all at this point, um, I can show them on my iPad and say like, this is actually what the color is. You guys need to fix your monitor. Um, so yeah, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, the color management is a nightmare. I've wasted too much time trying to read up and understand it. Uh, Jafar, I'm doing great, and uh, I'm glad you noticed that Sinuous is back. Sinuous is back, because it's been a while since we've listened to him, and I've missed him. Um, okay, so, all right, let's 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 uh, let's get into a little bit of um, uh, the Gaia. I've, <laughs> ever since yesterday, I have this, like, mind thing where every time I go to say this, I get stuck between Gaia and World Creator. Uh, I'm sure that'll change, but uh, for now, that's what it is. Um, so, one thing, we're going to try not to pan around too much because it's a nightmare. And they have um, preferences for navigation. I've sent the sensitivity down to 1%. It's still all over the place. I've tried going up to 400%. These don't seem to do anything, at least not at the moment. Um, so we'll do what we can. But... Um, I don't really have a plan for today. So if you guys have questions on anything that it looks like I might know based off of the two images that I've shown you guys so far. Um, and for those of you that missed it, I'll pull up the other one. Uh, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of start making some stuff and pointing out some of the things that I, I've noticed. Um, but yeah, this was the uh, kind of quick image um, that I made last night this morning. Um, we might look at this in 3D because I learned some things. I tried some, some new export stuff with... Uh, I learned. I learned things, uh, but let's make something. Okay. Um, 
So a couple things real quick is that one, when you're getting started, you can kind of drop in as many of these different primitives as you want. All right, you can pull down dunes and then it'll just open up a separate one since nothing's connected. Uh, quick word of warning, I have found trying to select all of these and delete them at once is a quick way to frequently get it to crash. Not every time, but uh, I've been deleting one by one ever since then. Um, one of the other things that we had going on, uh, Patrick and I had going on a lot, is that we would be looking at something like this erosion, and we would change something, and we'd sit here and we'd wait for it to uh, do something. And this little, you can press uh, F twice and it'll update it, or you can just go down to this apply changes button down here and press it. It's only for the ones that are, are can be pretty slow to calculate, uh, but I miss it all of the time. I'm sure we'll see that today. Um, is there anything else major from last time? Not really. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's get to building something. To be honest, if you're just looking for like background stuff, um, you can really just kind of pick something, anyone, and just kind of play with the seed stuff until you start to get something that you kind of like shape-wise just clicking around in, in random seeds and then throwing like that basic erosion onto it. You get pretty good results like really quick and for background stuff like super simple. Um, I, I still haven't quite fully figured out um, the naming is kind of all over the place I'm finding. Um, over here, and they don't have any tool tips. Um, so I, I just do a lot of clicking to, and kind of see what's going on with things. Um, one thing that's worth noting is that, uh, so if we're adjusting the scale, and scale scale is something that, that you never, it never quite does what you expect it to do. Uh, or at least I have found that it, I guess wrong as often as I guess correctly on, on what, whether lower scale means bigger or smaller or tighter or looser or whatever it might be. Um, but for adjusting any of them, you can right click on um, the slider and you get all of these little options. One, if you just start typing, you can type in the number or you can increment by one, by 10 or all the way to maximum or all the way to minimum. Ever since I found that, I've been using it a whole lot. Uh, and this guy resets it to whatever the default is, the, the little target guy. Um, so that can be really helpful, especially when you're trying to fine tune some stuff that we're doing lately. Uh, another thing is, let's make something with this, let's say. This is kind of cool. Um, so let's go to, we're going to turn off the erosion for now. Erosion can be slow, and I, I've found that it's better to use it later, at least kind of for what I've been, I've been doing. Um, once you have everything kind of something that you think could be cool or interesting, uh, down here in this bottom right corner, you have all of these kind of adjustments that you can use as separate nodes, or you can just do within the node itself. So like influence, for the, the standard influence tends to be just how much up and down it goes, kind of the vertical scale, or the, I guess it's officially saying the influence of the node is what I'm guessing. All of the language could use an upgrade, I gotta be honest. The words are like funny, like the one called worse lands, but a lot of these things, the word could be much more descriptive to, to understand what you're doing. Um, anyways, influence is a super helpful one. So is the auto level function, which like, if you can't get it bigger than this, auto level will stretch it. Um, so let's find something that seems reasonable. Something maybe like that. And let's maybe mix this. I've been doing a lot of mixing. And so let's do some mixing right off the bat. And that's maybe, this kind of feels like a mountain range. Let's mix it with, let's make it like a slopey range. I think that'll do. Um, so we could do, there's like a bunch of stuff we can do. But let's just grab a simple one. A gradient, which is just giving like black to white, right? Uh, or radial. Don't really want that. What does Helix give us? 
And let's use let's use that. That seems kind of cool. Don't really know what it's gonna give us. Um, and then let's mix those two guys together. For mixing things together, um, for unless we're talking about maps, you use the combine um, node. And anytime you're looking to get a node here, you can right click and start typing and just press enter. Or you can press tab and that'll also bring up the search. If you want it to attach automatically to um, one of these nodes, if you just have the node selected uh, when you do it, it'll out automatically uh, add it into the default place. Same if you drag things over, but to be honest, I spend more time looking for things in here. I've been typing for the most part. Um, okay, so let's combine these two. And I think we're gonna end up with something kind of cool here. I have a, I have a, I have a vision um, already. But so this is just blending them by default. Blend is kind of like just opacity, uh, an opacity mix. So it's taking 50% ridge, 50% gradient, gradient, and it's just mixing them together, and it ends up with something somewhere in the middle. If we go 100%, it's going to be uh, almost all gradient, and if we go 0% it's going to be almost all of the first one. Let's go back up. Let's look at some of the other blend modes. We're going to be doing these a bunch. It's important to understand it. And they, some of them kind of make sense and some of them don't. Um, depending on how familiar you are with like mathematical operations and whether that's comfortable for you guys or not. But uh, let's go the the three that I've been using I think the most let's say is um, screen uh, max and min and then add a little bit as well but let's skip that for now um, so if we set this to screen what it's doing is it's just just like in Photoshop it's taking the layer underneath down here and it's screening it on top of this layer and so you end up with it just everything getting lifted um, add does it similarly I think it has to do with exactly how sharp it is. Screen's a little bit softer. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the math is doing there. Uh, max, however, um, let's go ahead. So right now you can see that our gradient is above pretty much everything on, um, on our ridges. Let's go ahead, down here in the bottom right, there's a little check mark that says drop it to the floor. Oh, we have that one little piece that's sitting there. There's a bias gain change here. We're gonna actually do it with a node, bias gain, which kind of lets you move things up and down and kind of do like an FFD type transform for you Max users out there. Um, but let's go back to bias gain really quickly. And what we're gonna do is we're going to um, I still don't fully understand it. I do a lot of what we're doing right now, which is like, okay, so bias like either clamps or stretches the scale and then intensity moves it. Um, so now we can see we still need to drop this data down to the bottom. We should still have an option to drop it to the floor. And then let's take this guy and maybe lift it up a little bit. Uh, I'm sure you can do it down here, but I am just gonna do it with an, another bias gain, which I have found handy and it makes sense to me. And so we're just going to take this guy and move it up. Bias gain and you wanna go back and change something before it and see how it affects afterwards. You can click around without it moving. To get back to where it's not pinned, you just go to wherever the pin is and press F. Or if it's on something like this, you can press and it's pinned. You can also just wherever you are, if you press F twice, it'll detoggle it. Not the most intuitive in the world, but it makes sense once you get it. Okay, so let's go back to um, our combined node here. I know we're kind of stuck on this, but these are kind of like the basic things that I very much didn't get at the beginning. Um, Oh, and I gotta be mindful to keep this guy on the left here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what Max Node is doing is it's going through the entire thing and at every point picking, looking at the two different surfaces that we're combining and picking the highest. So it's not adding anything together, it's just looking at each pixel, um, basically. 
So as opposed to screen, which gives us kind of like a sum of these two um, nodes, right? On top, layers that on top of it. Uh, max gives us just whichever value is greater at any given point, which is how you can see how it like sticks out there. So there are some things that that's super useful. Uh, as you would guess, min does uh, the opposite. It takes whichever one's less of the two. Um, for this one, what I have going in mind is that I'm thinking this could be cool with the screen. We don't want this sheer cliff face here that's coming from our gradient. And so another node that I used a lot is the blur node. And I think what we should be able to do is since it's just a gradient, if we blur this a whole bunch, you can see how it's softening those edges so that we end up don't end up with a steep, steep thing there. And then now, There we go. I think that's gonna be cool. And I'm gonna take, you can rotate the light around here. Um, the sun adds a miss and we'll do it so that we can kind of, we'll see if we can make something cool happen here. Um, so because this is pinned, I can go back to this bias gain and like turn it up again and see what the end result is after it gets mixed. Huh. Can be helpful. Okay. So let's go and what else do we have to show? Let's do a little bit of masking um, with a combined node. Um, and maybe a stratified node. Stratify gives you like some cool uh, kind of mind sweepery looks to it. And it can be, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, so we're going to use erosion towards the end. So we don't have to worry too much about what's happening here. What does substrata do? It sounds like it would add steps in between. I don't think that's what it does. I feel like I thought that last time. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that did. Uh, maybe it adds steps just in some places. Oops. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Uh, but let's say we only wanted... Uh, I'd say we only wanted this stuff to be happening down at the bottom and as it got up towards the top, uh, we want it to go away. So what we can do is we're gonna set up another combined node. Right, so we still, let's turn off that. So we're gonna combine what it was originally with the stratification here. And right now it's gonna give us kind of just a, a softening of the effect, which is sometimes super useful. But we can also go back to this combined node and we can grab a, um, uh, what do you want to do? We want to do a height mask. Okay, so if we want to now see the height mask, but we want to see it on top of the geometry, uh, Chop pointed us in the direction last time. Uh, you say pin as underlay, which the shortcut's G, and you get a different color. You get a little purple guy here. Now, if we go up to the height mask, we can see what it's doing. So. If we want it to kind of stop somewhere as it climbs up this, we just sit and adjust these values until it looks right. So we just kind of pull the mask down. Uh, I want it to kind of wrap over here, I think. And then fall off is basically how much of a gradient it pulls. So if we make that zero, obviously we're going to get like a hard line. And if we make that, you know, some big number up here, it's going to be super blurred. But we want something kind of in the low range, I think. I think something like that. So then we can take that map and plug it into the combine. And now it's just affecting the bottom, which, uh, and, uh, I think, I think that we can do better. Maybe what we want to do 
least before the stratify. So Terrace does a similar thing. I was playing with all of like the stepping last time, so we're just gonna keep going with that uh, for today because I'm kind of familiar with it. Um, here we can go and we can kind of adjust the number of steps and we can make them maybe a little bit steeper. more turn down the uniformity I think something like that actually could end up looking cool and then there's an option for the process where we can set residual which uses some kind of noise maps um, so that it doesn't happen everywhere but that it seems a little bit aggressive on us. and I don't think you can tune down Let's do a gentle business. Eh, let's go back to the normal one. Why not? Um, uh, Jafar, we will talk about the export because I had some issues trying some things as well um, last night slash this morning. Um, and so, yes, we'll do that. But we won't actually export things because it takes forever. Um, okay, let's take this terrace and let's plug it into the Stratify node now. And let's see what we get. Maybe this will be cooler. Maybe it won't. Um, and then that, let's uh, weaken it a whole lot. I have found that whenever you start running into these sheer verticals, since I, everything's obviously being computed from a... Um, uh, depth mask, right? So you can only go up, you can't go out, you can't have overhangs. Uh, the more of those you end up with, the worse your final result ends up looking. Um, so can we get rid of it? What does filter do? Yeah, I have no idea what filter is going to do. Eh, it didn't do much. Do, do. Eh, I don't love that either. Eh, that's okay. We're going to keep moving forward. We're not actually trying to make something to use. Um, what other... I did end up doing like a lot of these combines and then recombining it with itself um, things. Let's... Uh, there are two other ones that I know I used a bunch, which was Carver. Um... There was Carver, and then there was also Shatter, which I liked a lot. And I remember them being pretty... Oh, there we go. That's kind of fun. Sweet. Not even going to mess with any settings. I like it. Um, It's kind of sweet. You can still see like a little bit of like the striation from before, but not not entirely. Um, Carver was really cool, and I feel like I did something cool with Shatter. It's still a lot of kind of like clicking, trying something, seeing if I like it, seeing if I don't like it, turning things off and on, over and over and over again. Um, I feel like when there's an apply change button, it should be like bright red flashing because I usually sit and wait for it to update and then you know, realize I've been waiting for nothing. Uh, I feel like that's cool. Um, we could mask it in and do something else, but for now, we're just kind of leaving. Um, and let's maybe, let's maybe see, oh, let's do two, let's do two more things. We're gonna save that for a second. Let's add, uh, Patrick did this yesterday, or two days ago. If you're going like full fantasy, you can create some crazy stuff with this swirl thing. 
<laughs> it's so much fun. Um, oh, I dig that. <clears throat> Should we keep it? Uh, let's see. This is one of the, the places where um, you sometimes get some really, like, really fun results by mixing it back in with where it came from. And then I've, I've typically just kind of been going through and clicking. Ooh. That's kind of fun. Let's see what happens if we, if we throw Max in there. Oops. I think Screen might be the most fun on those ones. <laughs> I I can't tell you how satisfying it is to look at this. Um, okay, I think we'll keep that, and then let's just uh, and then let's throw an erosion at the end, and then we will move into how I've been exporting things. Or no, before that, we'll do a little bit of color stuff. Um, so erosion. I've been doing a lot of guessing on uh, on erosion. I don't really ever know what kind of comes from this. Inhibition, I think, is like how filled it gets. No, not really. Excuse me. Scale. Let's turn out. Let's see what happens when we move the scale up. Let's turn down the strength of it a bit. Nah. I feel like that get that gets it like too soft. Ooh, what happens if we have rivers in? I haven't seen that check mark before. I'm gonna guess we're gonna guess. Ooh. We're gonna leave those guys in there. Why not? Okay, let's put some color on this thing. Now, color, um, I feel like I did a little bit better this time. Right, there's like some sense of color in this scene. Um, but the first time I went through and did it and looked at it, and I'll actually show you. Let's save this file. Let's just save it to the desktop. Four times. Um, so this is what that thing looked like. But let's undo... Oh, measure. So this was the first time, and in the viewport, I thought it looked really cool and good, and I brought it up, and there's, um, you're gonna see in a second. There's a couple little settings that I found that really help. Um, and a couple that really hurt. So as opposed to at, um, as opposed to exporting it as a five, uh, a ten twenty four mask, I exported this one as a um, five twelve mesh, and then everything else um, at eight k. And one, you can see that we have all of these points, and I think that's even with a relax modifier on it. Oh no, I put that on the other one. Um, but if you look at the actual like map, and remember the color map is you know 8K, um, it's 
like awful. I was so disappointed in this. Um, we have all these like hard edged lines everywhere and it looked really, really bad. I was very, very upset. So I think I kind of fixed that. Um, fixed that to some degree. What happened here? So that was the low res mesh that we ended on. And this, I went back to 1024 when I exported it and I adjusted some of the settings in those sat maps. Uh, and I think things came out quite a bit better. Um, Jafar, uh, when you say you have exactly the same issue, do you mean you have the, exactly the, the, uh, the banding, like hard edge lines or the geometry? We're gonna talk about both, but just to make sure that I'm aware of, of what you're asking, it'd be helpful. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's have a look see these here. And so with just a couple of tweaks to the diffuse map, uh, I still uh, don't mind that, that line. I'm not sure what it is. It might actually be the edge of that mesh it is. Um, I obviously just duplicated it, but these all got a lot softer. And like the colors on the edge, as a combination of like geometry, normal map, and then noise in the colors, they don't hold up if you get super close still. Um, obviously. But at a distance, I feel like they look a hell of a lot better. Uh, and I'm not still, these little lines, eh, they're they, we're gonna talk about some of those at the end if we have time. Um, those are some of the issues I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, but let's look at how, let's have a look at how I got the color maps kind of to work for this, and the one little tweak that goes from super ugly map to pretty good looking map. Um, can you guys hear the 1080s or the 2080s uh, jet engines? They're going. Um, Where was I gonna show? Open with Adobe Photoshop. And then the other one. This one. So this was the second map, and you can see we still have some of these like super hard lines, which I'm not sure where that got introduced. Um, this was the first map. Uh, world of difference. This is terrible. And it want, that's one to one uh, pixels to pixels with the screen. Uh, so let's go in and have a look sees uh, at some of those issues. Okay, uh, close that. So we have our erosion node, and um, I don't. I, I watched a couple of videos. I don't feel like there's a. I haven't figured out what like a best practices for this yet. Um, I've just kind of been layering it. The last file is a mess. Uh, what can you do? Um, but so let's go and let's just kind of see if we can find like a base color to work with. I found to be helpful. Um, and I have, I've just been using, letting the geometry drive it. So you tend to get these like linear things. Uh, but then we at least have a color everywhere. That's kind of my thinking. Guys, if someone has a better idea, let me know. Um, but otherwise, so first let's take that. And so now, uh, we don't really have any cliffs in this, but we kind of do. Um, let's go ahead and add, so if you click on erosion, um, uh, Jafar, sounds good, buddy. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, and hopefully I'll cover some of the things that I found helpful. Um, okay, so, uh, where was I? So first let's grab, uh, erosion and let's grab, um, the flow pass might be really nice. Um, for this one, 
which you can grab directly out of here, but uh, I've not. I've just been doing it with a node because it, I don't know, feels better to me. Um, and for some reason, it always defaults to tertiary when I have found primary to be like the main one that I've wanted to work with. Da -da. And so then we can add like the secondary and the tertiary nodes. Oh, this is another apply changes ones. We can add them all and then as opposed to uniform, we can adjust how much each one's actually influencing the colors. As long as we remember to press apply changes each time. Um, so let's get something like this as a map. And then let's let that drive another sat map. And since this is the flow, let's let's maybe make those green for now. Um, oh. And let's reverse this guy real quick. Uh, and we're just gonna click until we see something that's kind of interesting. Um, if you want more variation, you can add jitter. Sometimes helps, sometimes doesn't. In my experience. Oh, uh, sure. Why not? Well, let's just go with this for now. And then, so then we need to mix these two guys together. Which, if you select both of them, you can go down here and hit this little button, or you can press F8. And you get this mixer node, which has kind of like the same type of logic as the combined node, only it's for maps and colors. And so, if we want, as opposed to just kind of blending them together, what we can do is use the same flow mask or any other mask for that matter and we can plug it into the mask setting and then if we go to 100 percent and let's maybe make this i know i said i didn't want to do orange but you can see now we have green and orange kind of green whatever you can do what you get what are you gonna do um and then the other thing for this sat map, uh, I don't. Ooh, ooh. What happened? There? I got like one quick glimpse. I kind of like. Oh wait. I have no idea why this changed. Can tell you, but we're just gonna leave it like that for now. How long have we been going? Here? Forty-five minutes. Oh, we still got a few more minutes. Um, so let's do uh, a couple things. So let's grab. Going back to erosion, clicking on it so that we get a uh, node coming right out of it. Uh, slope, I have found to be very, very helpful. Slope being kind of exactly what you expect it to be. And what I want to try and grab is like the more vertical faces. We'll give them a separate color. And we probably want that joining to happen before we get to the flow one, I'm gonna say. Uh, and I don't know what color face, so we're just gonna grab a set map. We'll let it drive that for now. And let's say maybe that, why not? Let's see what it gives us. Let's add some jitter. Ew, that looks 
That looks very, very flat. Flatness is kind of what I've constantly been trying to avoid um, with the color. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna try, I'm gonna grab a protrusion map. Which we'll see what this looks like. Protrusion kind of picks things that are sticking out, as you would guess. And let's have that drive the actual sat map, which should give us variation on these guys in and of itself. And then we'll let slope actually do the masking. We're gonna grab these guys, F8 again to grab another mixer. So you can see here, that's just kind of blending it everywhere. And we're gonna throw in that mask, which should Hmm. There we go. I think. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's just make this a little bit more drastic. I can't tell if it's doing the thing that I wanted it to do or not. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, so either way, so we're getting some variation. Um, <laughs> Nitten, if... I feel Chop mentioned this, and I should have heeded his warning. I think when I was first talking about um, uh, getting playing with Gaia, I love this kind of like thinking because it's all it's a, it, like it's kind of like if you like scripting or not. Um, if you don't, if like everything that I've done today feels like stuff that you don't want to deal with, I think World Creator is probably for you because it's. You don't deal with this in the same way. Um, you kind of think through it in a, in a different way of thinking. If you like this, you don't get this kind of like very granular mathematical control in World Creator. So I feel like that's, I think they both have their, their, their place um, and their benefits. But uh, I've been playing with this now for, you know, two days worth of free time straight because uh, I, I really enjoy it. Um, okay, so let's plug this guy into uh, our mixer down here. And now let's find one of those spots. So this is where it's, this is what was kind of like messing me up before was that I was looking at stuff like this and I was assuming that um, how this looked was like pixelated and everything else was because I was looking at it in 2K up here. And anything above that, if I hit 4K, it'll go through and crank through to get it. But even using my entire CPU, like that's a couple of minutes away um, at very least. And so I was assuming that why this was looking, you know, not great here was just the resolution thing. That was not the case. If we go uh, to this map and we zoom in, like this looks pretty cool. But a lot of what you're seeing is the light. If we turn off the 3D so you're just seeing what the map is, you can see how grand, how banded and everything else this is. So to fix it, um, I did a couple of things. Um, first things first, inside of these sat maps in post-processing, noise. It is super duper helpful. Let's look at specifically just this map. This map looks awful here, right? You can see how harsh these edges are. In post-processing, we can just go in and we can throw like 1% noise in and it starts to break up that edge. Now, granted, this still looks very like bad substance or, you know, computery, but we're layering it all up and it's really just that hard edge that we need to get through. Um, and then you can do some adjustments to the overall color. What is output player? Uh, I'm not sure. We're gonna leave it off. And so we're just gonna go through in all of the sat maps. Um, 
and give them all 1%. Um, 1% noise. So we could always bring that definition back if we wanted to. Now if we turn the, the sun back on. Um, I can't explain to you what this issue is. Oh, yes, I can. I was pinned there. Each now and again, you have to go back and refresh stuff. Uh, and I don't know why. Um, so now if we zoom in again here, yes, you can see that noise now. But that can get hided with details to some degree later on. Um, I found noise to be super duper helpful. Uh, let's see what else we can do here. Uh, let's go ahead and add on uh, some kind of variation that's height from top to bottom. Um, oops. Uh oh. Come on, baby. And all of these are hiding, by the way, in the data section. But honestly, I find it the search is really good. This is really confusing. Um, okay, so we have height. And we're going to want that to be kind of black to white all the way through. Which I forget how I got this last time. Did I go with 50% and then just a lot of fall off? Gets us white at the bottom. Uh, sure, why not? Well, you know what? Normalize might give us what we want. Uh, no, normalize does not. Uh, Jay, me as well. We're do export in a second. I know we're running a little long on this guy, but uh, we'll just keep going, and we'll we'll go through at least export. Um, for what I have found does work and doesn't work, at least for what I'm looking for. Um, but let's get one more piece of variation. Let's have this drive another sat map of some sort. I feel like we want something that goes from like greenish to whitish maybe. Uh, there's a reverse option if you like just have the colors in a different place. There's also bias, which lets you move things up and down. Um, so the way I got this white level to sit right in the middle was just playing with this bias function. Um, so we do something like that. Maybe we add a little bit of jitter, see if we like that or not. All right, we can slide this up to kind of clamp things. Let's take something like that, and then we'll grab that and that, uh, F8. Or just this little button down here, or it's just called a mixer node. And I think actually because this is kind of like that base coloring, and you can see like that looks... That looks really, you know, obvious, right? So what I think we want to do is instead, let's go back. The order that you stack them obviously matters. Let's go through and add it. I think before. Let's only put it on the, sh on the sh uh, excuse me, steep stuff. So let's delete that. And this is the, oops. This is the node where um, we're coloring the faces with that guy. So we're gonna grab that and we're gonna grab that and F8 again or mixer. And which color do we like? So we're just mixing between how much those blend together and now we're just gonna plug this into place 
of that so that when we look at the uh, together, it's only hitting the vertical faces. All right, so we have something that, you know, we could do a lot more work, obviously, but we have something. Um, let's export it. I'm very tempted just to throw in Snowfall and the Ice Flow. I'm going to do something with them because I'm, I haven't made a snowy images in a long time. And I haven't really ever done any fantasy snow flowy stuff. It's really satisfying to see it update, but I feel like if I try it right now, it's just going to crash things. So I'll also save. Um, and we're going to talk about export. Okay. Exporting time. I'm sorry for clapping in front of the microphone. Um... We need snowy flakes. Knitting. There will be snow soon. There will be snow with something soon. But not today. Not today. Um, it's so satisfying. Maybe we'll try it after we do exporting. Uh, and things crash. Because one of the um, one of the big issues is that if we went back and wanted to keep this at 2K and um, export it all the way from... If we wanted to go back to one of these beginning nodes and change it, or even if this crashed and we opened it, we have to wait for like a minute or two minutes or whatever for the whole chain to update again so we could adjust erosion without affecting things time wise that much if we went back before all of that it obviously has to re um, think through the entire node stack and at 2k which doesn't seem like a lot it still takes a lot of time um, I've never been more inclined to want to do aerial images than when I play with this software. Okay, anyways, focus. So, let's kind of pull these apart real quick just so we can have some visual separation. There's some um, there's some ways that you can do separate graphs for just the coloring stuff and just the geometry stuff. I've not messed with it yet. I'm not going to do it right here now. But with the last kind of geometry node, uh, we're going to make, for the way that I have found it to be the easiest way to export things. And again, you can right click and you can say mark for export or that's F3 and you get a little orange dot. Um, on the right side over here, you get the bill, which is what's going to be built when you try to export all of this stuff. Um, so right now, I'm gonna put one on the erosion itself because if it's gonna go through and I'm gonna let my computer work for like 20 minutes, which at 8K in a, in a terrain like this is about how long it's been taking, somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes. Um, you should The nodes on the other one though are, are kind of stupidly complex. Um, but um, this is just gonna give you that flat, how to displace a plane uh, 8k map right and which is great for background stuff where you don't need to place things specifically uh, and you don't want to just add geometry into your scene that's really awesome so I might as well export it if we're going to export that but that's not what I've been using and uh, playing around what I've been using is you find it down here it's the mesher you guys have probably already found it um, and so for measure, measure properties um, on this geometry. On this geometry, the 512 map, uh, 512 geometry with the normal or the details um, uh, displacement, I was very unsatisfied with. Uh, going from 8K, to, I don't know, adding 8K to. Um, uh, 512 maybe it's just too much of a jump or I don't know 10k I've, or 1k I've been really happy with uh, 512 has been too little so uh, that's by obviously no means definitive just what I have found so far I've generally been happy on all of the exports that I've done at 1024 and not happy about um, 512. I haven't played with quads yet. So. 
don't know about that yet. Um, just leaving everything else the same except normalized. I've been changing one unit to one meter and that just brings it in a little bit better, I think. I don't know, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, one you have to scale right away uh, before. Um, this Nitin, yes, this is the um, thumbnail. This is the thumbnail that I used, and it's rendered not off the 512 version. It's off the. Uh, it's actually yes, it's this one, which is the um, 1024 mesh with 8K displacement maps on it. Um, so measure. 1024 on vertex count. Uh, it's like vertex is on an edge, obviously. Well, kind of, not even that. It's actually polygons on an edge. Vertex seems to, eh, whatever, you guys get the idea. Um, you'll get a mesh out of that that's 1024 by 1024 quads, but it'll be triangulated, uh, which I think is probably good for the mesh. I think forcing quads will actually give you uh, worse results. Um, but who knows? Um, where was I? Leave that as measure. Uh, and then the next thing that I've been adding is uh, details. Wherever that is. It's in data. Um, but yeah, the details node here. And for this guy, it's gonna, the only setting that there is for um, the option is the target scale. And so that regardless of what size uh, you're going to export all of your maps at, that's specifically referring to the mesh size that you're going to export. So for this, it's a 1024. So in details, we're going to set that to 1024. And then I've also been exporting a normals map. And I... There's something funny going on that I haven't fully figured out yet. Um, I've been doing a lot of, uh, oops, normal map is the option. I've been going through and, uh, doing a lot of like swapping green and red cause it like just looking at it, I don't know. I don't have an answer. Something weird's going on. When I have an answer, I will let you guys know. Um, but I've actually been doing two normal maps on this last one. You can also attach a normal map to details. And I will show you what the difference looks like. Uh, when looking at these, you need to make sure, I don't know why in 2D it shows you shadows. Um, I wish I could turn it off here and leave it on in this, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so here's our, our, the normal map that it's currently creating just straight from the actual mesh node. Uh, which you can see super duper strong. We're gonna turn it down a little bit. Uh, I've, I've been messing with, with trying to get it right and I've not spent enough time on figuring it out. Plus, I'm by no means a normal maps expert. Um, but what you will see is that this one that comes off of the overall mesh is kind of giving you normals of the entire shape, right? In the same way that the main displacement gives you displacement if it's coming off of a plane. The normal map that come, is coming off of the details option uh, is giving you just the, like the fine detail. And again, the default weight is super strong. Um, see this one looks right to me without flipping uh, X or Y and then this one looks better to me flipping Y I'm not I, I need to read up and figure out what's going on and maybe learn more about the most maps if you guys know let me know um but so yeah, so all of them, uh, selecting them and pressing F3. And then on this final mixer node, which is your final color node, uh, which you can actually, uh, so you can see we've gotten rid of at least like that really harsh, harsh banding. 
there are some more nodes that we probably want to add in here. You can do some stuff like curvature, um, which is you know, kind of like giving you some like ambient occlusion. Uh, and there's also, uh, no, excuse me. Curvature gives you like edges. So you can either take flat stuff or sharp stuff from it um, and add some detail there, which you'd probably want to do. And then you'd also probably want to add occlusion, which kind of lets you pick out like some of like the detail cracks on the surface so that we don't have these big flat areas uh, with absolutely zero detail in them. Uh, so if you exported this, it wouldn't give you that banded stuff, but you also wouldn't get as much variation as you could be getting um, throughout. So either way, let's call that good enough for now. Um, oh, guys, what did I say at the beginning? Don't delete two nodes at the same time. That attempt to continue is great because you can press save afterwards and, and open it and close it. And if I keep touching these, we, we're probably going to have it actually fully crash or it's just going to keep giving me warnings. I'm just going to leave them down there and see what happens. Um, I love this. Guy has crashed, but you can keep working. That is one of my favorite software messages I've ever gotten. Um, okay. Uh, back to Mixer. Uh, one of the things that is worth noting is that you can go in to something like this and we can add a uh, color, fix, color FX node. And in this color FX node, we can do a couple of things. One, if you have a bunch of like really hard lines, you can blur them. For some reason, noise comes before blur in the operations. So I had to do that last time. I had to blur it with one color effects node, which went to another color effects node. And then I added noise and then I mixed them back together. Um, just, just, we're not gonna do both right now. We are gonna add some noise. To, we are gonna add, excuse me, some noise to it. And you're gonna see that uh, that's 100% noise. We're gonna set it to. Oh, zero percent actually adds a little bit of noise. I learned something. Last time I had it set at one percent, and even one percent of noise is a lot of noise. Um, at least it was on my last map. On this one, it doesn't seem to be a big deal. Oh no, yeah, so if you actually look at where you'd want to keep some detail, like on some of these little, like, uh, that's a cliff, right? And that's like this rivery thing. Just one, per, even 1% 1 noise completely, like, destroys that edge to the point where it's probably a little bit too much. Let's take a look real quick at what 0% noise is doing. Even 0% feels like too much. And so to uh, fix that problem, select those two, F8, you get another mixer node. Um, there's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Um, but this way you can just go and using blend, you can go from in between some noise and, and not a ton of noise. So that's too much. That feels a little bit too little. Something like that. Anyways, uh, you can also obviously adjust the overall color of things, uh, the brightness, all of that stuff, or you can just export it and do most of that in Photoshop, which is what I've been doing. Um, okay, so let's turn lights back on so that we're not looking at that ugliness. Uh, and then on this final mixer node, we're going to. Uh, press F3 on that or uh, mark for export yeah seriously Jay it's like 0% what I guess maybe you'd want to use a lot of noise if you were doing that at the beginning or maybe you put a lot of noise Ooh. you know what I have a I have a thing we, I want to test really quickly. Um, that gave me 
Uh, yeah, it definitely does, Jay. But it, if you if you like Houdini, I, I I think you'll be into it as you do more of this. Um, why will it not give me a preview? There we go. So this guy has got 1% noise already in it, but let's see. So if we took that and put it into a color, color effects, so this guy, that's, that's, I mean, by default, it's at a hundred percent noise. And so that's a lot of noise. Can you, um, did the music just get really fuzzy or did, so, did we have some interference happening on my headphones? I have no idea what's going on in my headphones right now, but it's not good. We're going to turn that, we're going to turn that off. Uh, let me know if it sounds okay for you guys. I can turn it off if it's messing with you. Um, my apologies for that. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't, it's either, it could be my headphones, but I have not organized all of the cables on this side of things since I built and moved all the things. Um, so it could also just be that I have a whole bunch of cables messing with one another. Who knows? Problem for the rest of the day. Um, music is a tad loud. That I can turn down. I don't like tell me was that too much can you guys even hear it now or is that good you guys you guys gotta let me know these things I have no idea I can't actually hear the mix that you guys are hearing um, and I don't know the diff I don't know the effect of negative five uh, you know DBs perfect thank you Jay um, okay let's get back to what we're doing so this is that map Here's what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm wondering if we get some like big. Oh no. I want to play with that more as like a as like getting a good starting point to start working from. That noise. Okay. This is where you end up losing all of your time in Guile, where you're like, oh, here's an idea, and then you spend the next hour trying to figure out if you can actually make it work. Uh, delete. One note at a time. One note at a time. Um, okay, we were exporting. Uh, back to exporting then. Oops. At some point we moved that guy over. We'll fix that. Um, so the measure and the details was the big one, uh, most definitely for me. And then, uh, oh, it's not, it's not the headphones. Guys, I'm so distracted by now. It's not the headphones because the monitoring is still super clear. So it's something before it hits um, my, my mic preamp. So it's something from the computer to that. Troubleshooting, folks. Um, once you've marked everything for export, then you just go over your build tab. Here you can t tell it where you want it to go. By default, it goes to the builds folder as opposed to the file location. And then you just set, you know, file name builds, timestamp, however many folders and everything else. You do want one that has the pluses, um, three pluses in it so that it'll increment each time you export so you don't write over something that took you 20 minutes to generate. Um, but setting resolution, uh, I've really only been ex exporting things at 8K as far as the maps go. I haven't tried ridiculous 16K anything. And um, I haven't experimented with any lower resolution because, quite frankly, I couldn't imagine myself ever using it. 
Uh, and I think the free version, if you're only playing with the free version, limits you to 1K, which I feel like is a huge mistake on their behalf because at 1K, I mean, this is at 2K and it, you know, it only looks good from a distance and even close, we can still see how pixelated it is. Um, if you're working in 1K, which I'm not going to change now because uh, it's going to mess things up, uh, I would be pretty underwhelmed, with the exception of like far background. Well, I guess if you're into games, you're you're okay with low poly stuff. Either way, um, yeah, I feel like they should give you at least a certain amount of time where you can export up to 8K. Um, I have no intention of ever exporting anything smaller than 8K for the actual maps. Um, Nitin, I will try 16K, and I almost did it last night. Uh, I was gonna make a little image and then I ran into some issues, but I did uh, with this uh, unhide. Where's the little dude? Dude sitting like draped. And I think this camera maybe. Uh, we'll fire this guy up here. Um, this is almost comical. So this is, uh, I don't know how big this map is after it's got scaled. It's obviously not a mountain range size. It's like a large hot spring size. Um, this dude is, is real size and you're gonna see, this is an 8K map. Uh, you're gonna see what we get here in a second. second. Um, Nitin, I bought it. Uh, I bought the professional version. Uh, so don't mind him. I just kind of dropped him from an old file and he's got all kinds of problems going on. Uh, but look at the map underneath of him. That's a big ass, that pixel is like the size of his heel. Um, I think I paid 200 bucks for the, uh, um, I'm pretty sure I paid 200 bucks for the professional license. Where is, where is the buy option? Where it tells us. Purchase. Oh no, I want the actual differences. Features. Um, yeah, so the free one, you're blanked on 1024 by 1024. Uh, indie, you get up to 4K, which is uh, 100 bucks. And this is a perpetual license, which is awesome. For 200 bucks, you get the professional license, which gives you no resolution limits. Uh, so I don't know why that one's blanking, why above 16K isn't available yet. But, um, for 200 bucks, you get pretty much everything besides, like, uh, stuff you'd only need in a studio. Um, 4K Erosion Studio. I don't even know what Erosion Studio is. First, I've heard of it. Um, but yeah, uh, you can see how, how not okay this is. 8k is for this and even like 16k is not going to get rid of those pixels you'd really need to make a separate asset or at very least separate this asset out and use your own textures on it right because the geometry is actually not that bad i think if you had a separate um map on it it would be okay We'll find out here in a moment. Um, let's turn off color and let's turn off that and that. That thing needs some smoothing. We're not going to smooth that whole thing at the moment. Um, maybe it was actually, maybe smoothing would have fixed it. Another thing to check. Um, that's the 1024 mesh with uh, 8K maps. Anyways. Um, do I have any other tips or tricks? Not really. Um, that's how I've been exporting things. I know that was a little bit disjointed, but hopefully it made some sense. Um, I haven't exported anything at 16K. Uh, largely because I, uh, well, I guess I could have done it when I went to bed last night. And I, uh, didn't. But, um, this, this scene, wherever that image is, or 
3DS Max is. This scene as a whole, uh, I ended up exporting it a bunch of different times, just testing some different settings. 512 versus 1024 versus then playing with the color map. And um, it came, like most of the exports I think were like in like the 17 minute range on my PC. Um, so that's an 8K, so 16K, I'm gonna assume that it takes about four times as long. I would assume that that's a, a somewhat linear scale. Um, so an hour, maybe it's not a direct correlation with resolution. Haven't tested that yet. I will get back to you on it though. Um, but yeah, then loading it in is, is, I'm not doing it anything special in it really. Uh, the relax mesh for this one, um, let me close the, let's close this before we cause anything to get too pissed. Um, this is as much a, a result of, uh, I think how I made this mesh. I probably could have fixed this in Gaia before it came out, but we had a decent amount of those little, um, finger spikes, especially right down in here. Um, and that happens to also be where like the water was cutting. So that was super obvious. Um, so I did relax the mesh quite a bit, um, which is didn't seem to have any effect besides removing some of those triangulations and affecting the smoothing uh, in the render. So I need to play with that. And then uh, everything else is just kind of app storm based. Um, uh, Nin uses CPU. Um, Use a CPU for everything besides the actual display port in uh, inside of here. So every time it's calculating that um, cranking away, it did use all, I don't know how many cores are on my new computer. I don't know, 29, 28, definitely not 29, 24. Uh, it used, it did use hundred percent of my CPU, which is great. Uh, so it was using 48 threads or whatever that number is. Um, but even so, still took a while uh, at 8K. Um, I'm going to save and do something with this, I think. I don't know what. Maybe we'll do some abstract aerial art with it. I don't know. We'll save it for something. Um, but I think that that... Uh, I think that that kind of sums up everything that that I've learned. Basically, everything else has just been a lot of kind of um, playing. These profiles can be really um, useful for like reshaping ter terrain, getting rid of detail, or bringing detail back. Um, everything else, there's some that are really fun and cool, and I haven't found a use for them yet. Um, but I'm still definitely getting a feel for all of the features of it. I'm, I feel like hopefully that helped though. Um, I feel like I'm starting to understand at least how the software is thinking and I hope that that came across a little bit for you guys. Um, and I'm sure that we'll be doing more at some point in the future as I get my hands better on this. Uh, but let me know if you guys have any questions while I think if there's anything else um, we have going on. Ooh, a little one starting to wake up. Not yet though. Uh, uh, is there any other big things? Don't delete two nodes at once. It sometimes works, but I think that that's the main thing that caused crashing for me. Um, the other thing that I did find a lot is that if I open, um, when I went back and opened up a new file, a lot of times it goes through and it thinks through the whole thing and then it shows up and it looks all messed up. And I had to go back and basically like click through all of the nodes individually or go back and F3. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think F3 is the um, uh, refresh. No, F3 is marked for export. Uh, da, 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 refresh, F5. So for whatever reason, you have to wait for the, when you open it, you have to wait for the whole thing to load and then it, there's like an error all the way back like in one or two of these sometimes. And you gotta go back to the beginning and F5 that guy and kind of click through the whole node tree. Um, I don't, it seems like a bug, but uh, yeah. 
And then as far as resolution goes, I've basically just accepted 2K. Uh, 4K, it's cool to look at, but it takes... Um, you can't work at 4K. Uh, the only thing that I used it for was when I was trying to figure out what was going on with that color and banding. Uh, I set it to 4K. I went and, you know, got a new drink or something like that. Uh, a couple minutes later it came and I could kind of look at things, but then you set it back to 2K and you wait again. Under 2K seems really hard to work in, uh, is what I've found. i found that, and switching back and forth has a cost, because every time you switch it has to recalculate the whole um, node tree. And so I've just, I've found it to be easier just to stay at 2K and deal with the fact that changes take some time. Um, uh, for instance, flow maps can be exported. Oh, yes, um, Jay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so obviously, all of the like color nodes um, we want to export. The last one here, right, which is uh, oh God, I always hit the wrong icon, which is the actual color map, um, and that has little orange guy. And then you can also rename this. Um, and you can rename it in either place. So this, you can say, you know, base color or albedo or diffuse or whatever makes you happy. Is that, no, oh, it doesn't update there. Well, that doesn't help you at all. What happens if I rename it here? Let's call it diffuse here. Rename, oh, and then, so it goes from one to the other, but not, okay, whatever. Um, So you set all of those to export. If you want um, something like the flow map, um, duh, 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 duh. what am I trying to do? My brain's stopping. Uh, so many shortcuts to learn in two days. Uh, so this is what that flow map currently looks like. Um, and if you want this map, all you got to do is go to that node and uh, hit F3. And you get the little guy there. And you get, uh, what's it called? Mark for export. And then in your build, you're going to see that that flow came up. So that doesn't make any sense. You might want to rename it. Or you say like, eh, I don't actually want this one. I want, uh, I want a different flow node. Um, you can either, you can export flow from kind of anywhere. Um, but I'm just gonna go, I kind of try to keep them all together, at least so far. So you can type in flow, so we're gonna get another flow node. It doesn't have to be plugged into anything as far as doing stuff. Let's take a look at it, and let's say, like, for this one, I don't, I only want primary. And we wait for it to, oh, apply changes, blah, 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 blah. Eh, I don't see why I would want that, but, um... We go back and press G on this. Oh yeah, float for whatever reasons. I don't. That happens sometimes. You just gotta ignore it, I guess. Um, you might say, "Oh, I want secondary." Apply changes. Whatever the map is that you want here. Maybe say you don't want it to be uniform. Oh, baby's up. All right, T minus one minute. Um, then you just sit there and mark this guy. Um, for export and you'll get another uh, one over here and obviously if you have two flows I don't know if it automatically renames them or not so I recommend renaming them and then it'll be easier to find it um, so that it makes some sense but you can do that I also exported that for um, a height map at one point so that I could easily select that little white area in um, this image I made a mask just so I could select that white potentially um, and it, did, it wasn't actually driving anything in the uh, the file itself, just because I wanted to select it. Um, obviously, you can use that as a scatter um, black and white maps mask as well. Um, or you can also use it to uh, control in between uh, materials. If you want to not use just one material for the whole thing, which I, I have played with in World Creator, you really, really need to do that. For this one, I'm kind of trying to see how far I can get away without doing it. But... Um, uh, it's great for like saying I want one material for this one material for this one material for this all you need to do is set up three masks that in one way or another separate them for you 
Um, okay, my daughter is standing in her crib. Um, so that is it for me today, guys. It, I know this was a long one. I do hope that it was helpful, however. And um, thank you, as always, for being here and for the comments and questions. I do appreciate it very, very much. Um, Jay, I will answer that question, though. Uh, I bought both of them, so I have both of them now. Um, for me, yes, the sheer fact that I can export a map with a, a, a low resolution mesh with a map that is set for that mesh uh, for displacement is, it would take a lot to overcome that. So hopefully World Creator adds that. I'm pretty sure their license was perpetual as well. So I'll be keeping an eye on it. Um, I'm way more excited about Gaia than World Creator though. World Creator is more fun and snappier uh, Gaia, I feel like, um, is way more usable for something as an end result that I'm going to be happy with and not feel like I have to, to tweak for forever. So, um, for me, Gaia over World Creator, but not so much that I won't be keeping an eye on World Creator because if, if you had the performance of World Creator and the functionality of Gaia together, that would be unstoppable. So we'll see which one kind of steps up their game more because they both have some things that are really really cool um and Nitten, you know as Nitten mentioned if you don't like the idea of kind of thinking through all of the masks the math of uh, and logic of, of the nodes to separate the things that you want to get out of it um then i don't know how much how functional gaia will be for you i think it'll just be more frustrating um if you like that which i do it's awesome um, all right, guys. Thank you again. I do appreciate you hanging out. Uh, it is fun for me. I hope it is uh, entertaining and somewhat informative for you guys. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to try to procreate. The thing I wanted to do for procreate this week, I'm still not, I still don't have together just because, well, this is distracting me and some other things. Um, but I think we might just play and procreate tomorrow. Maybe to that tomorrow will just be a sketch for an hour a day in procreate. And I'll show you kind of at least some of the things that I've, I've been uh, playing with in it. That's the plan. Uh, knitting, we'll do a little procreate tomorrow. It's not the big thing that I had planned, but we'll play with procreate. And, uh, and uh, that, that's the plan now, officially. Guys, thank you as always. We will see you tomorrow. Be well. Be kind to one another. And uh, awkward time. Where is it? All right. Cheers and beeps and boops, guys. Beep. Boop.